This is an image from the Great Dane Graphics website. It's A-0172. And this is one of our Okidata files, or one of the inkjet slash laser printer files that we have. It has no uh, soft edges. It's got hard edge artwork and graphics, so it works really well for that decorating technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an image here. We're going to add some type to it real quick in Photoshop, and we're going to um, get our underbase or our vector clipping path uh, ready for the Okidata drivers. Uh, this is the image. We just opened it up. Let's go to the Image menu and come down to Image Size so we can see what we're dealing with. We're at 14 inches wide by 15.3 inches tall. And our resolution is 300 pixels per inch. So that's going to tell us where we're starting from. So I'm going to hit OK to this. And what I need to do now is I need to reduce the size of this image. So if I go to the Edit menu and come down to Free Transform, I'll get these adjustment bars. So if I click on this corner part, hold my Shift key to constrain the proportions, I can go ahead and change the size of it. So if you notice that little box, uh, it's got the width and the height there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to somewhere around 8 inches because I have a 711 white toner printer here in my office, so I have to print it to that size. Once I get it down to the size, the 8 inches, I can hit the return key or just double click inside this shape and it'll set that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the um, canvas size. So if I go to my crop tool here, I can make it fit. So I'm going to do this. Just kind of come right to the top there, get rid of all this extra space here. And now once I get the size down that I like, I want to double click inside it again. Now we're going to go to image menu, image size, and we're at eight and a half wide. Well, we, we're going to print this to an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and change the size of this to eight. That way it will fit on that paper without a problem. And I'm going to hit okay. And now what I want to do is I want to put some type here at the bottom. So I have to add canvas because right now it's too tight to put any type into unless we go over here. But I think visually, I want it to look like this image is coming out of type. Let's do that. Let's go to the image menu, come down to canvas size. And what I want to do is I want to make the height 11 inches, but I want to put all of my artwork at the top of my screen, which will be up in this area. And I'm adding space to the bottom because it's centered. So I'm going to add the rest of that room to the bottom of my document here. So if I hit OK, you can see what happens. My image stayed at the top and we added room here at the bottom to add some type. So now that we got that done. Let's go ahead and grab our type tool here. And click inside here and let's do uh, ocean breeze why not for something like that now it's bigger than my document right so what we need to do is we need to make it smaller I can do that several ways but the easiest way is just to go right back up to the edit menu come down to free transform and that will give me my binding box hold my shift key to constrain proportions and bring it in here like that and you can set it to whatever size you're looking for. But this is kind of the look I'm looking for. I just want it to look like this image is bursting out from where my type would be. So I'm going to do it like that. Maybe give it a little bit more room. Now if you notice, we got a lot of dead space at the bottom. I don't like to keep it that way. So I'm going to go back to my crop tool. Click on it. And I'm just going to grab my bottom here. And I'm going to kind of center it or just get it spaced out properly now. So that looks pretty good. So let's do this. We're going to zoom in so you can see it. And we're going to colorize this type here. Uh, remember, we have to create a vector path in order, or clipping mask in order to get the white toner to print properly to our Oki printers. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click my T icon in my layers palette here and it's going to select my type as you see. So now if I wanted to change the color of that type, this is how you do it. So if I click on this little black box, mine happens to be black. Yours may be a different color. It just depends on what the color type uh, is that you have or the color foreground color you have in your toolbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to choose a color. I could pick any color I want this way, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mouse into my image and we're going to pick like a dark blue part of the image. So it'll select it like that. And if you notice my type here, it changed colors. So that looks pretty cool. I'll hit OK. So now let's just go ahead and click off of it. That looks pretty good. But what if we wanted a little green or a teal green uh, stroke to it? If you go to your layers palette over here, you see a little effects icon. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to come down the stroke. And in here, I can change my stroke size. But the first thing we're going to do is come down the color and do the same thing. We're going to mouse out and pick a color that we want to use. I think that looks pretty cool. We hit OK, and we make it a little thicker like this. But see, it's positioned on the inside of my letters. That's why it's starting to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. It's starting to squeeze into the edges. Well, we're going to position this stroke on the outside of my type like that. That looks pretty cool. So I'm going to hit OK to this. And now I'm just going to go ahead and if I'm going to hit Command-0 or Control-0 on your PC to zoom back out to see the full size. And now we have a layer style. That's what that's called on, on our image. So 
I'm going to twirl it up like this just to hide it. All right, so now we have a cool little image. Now we have to make it work for our Okie Data print drivers to recognize. In the next video, I'll show you how to make that vector path.